speaking of sleeves, it's kind of like you're in slab. Prismatic God Box. Just mass bulk. Some of the favorite things that I found on the trip. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Shadow Realm where today we're going to be going through everything Yu-Gi-Oh that I bought for my recent trip to Japan. Alright guys, so yeah, something a little different today. We have a sort of shopping haul type of video. So on the table in front of me is most of the stuff that I brought from one of my recent trips to Japan that is all Yu-Gi-Oh related. Of course, we've got sleeves, we've got accessories, we've got merch, and of course cards. So I've got this big binder that is full of cards that I bought on my Japan trips and we will go through this as well. But yeah, all of this stuff was bought from one of my recent trips to Japan. Me and my wife try to go back to Japan at least once a year. There's so many things that we love about the country. We love the culture. She loves it for so many things. A lot of my hobbies are Japanese. So of course, trading cards are one of my big hobbies. And I'm also very into Japanese cars, JDM cars, the car scene, car culture. So we have been back to Japan quite a few times now, but all of the stuff I bought around mid last year. So this was around May, June last year. Now this was the first time that I'd gone back to Japan where I'd actually gotten back into the Yu-Gi-Oh hobby. So the previous times we went, I was into, of course, Pokemon cards, but I really got back into Yu-Gi-Oh around mid last year. And when we did that trip, I was kind of actually hunting for Yu-Gi-Oh stuff to buy on this trip. And that's what most of is on this table right now. But yeah, let me clear this table now and we'll go through everything that I got one by one and I'll point out some of the more interesting things that I bought. But let's get started with the first thing. All right, so zooming in now, the first thing we have, I wanna talk about are deck boxes. Of course, I bought a lot of cards in Japan and when I needed to transport them and transport them back, um, I needed some protection. So I needed some deck boxes and these ones were like pretty cool and they were just really cheap. So for the price and what you got, I was loving these deck boxes. So. They're just nice and simple, lightweight deck boxes. These, now I did keep receipts and prices for like pretty much everything that I bought. So we can do a kind of running total. You can tell me if you think I spent way too much on this stuff. But these deck boxes were about $5 and I'm just a big fan. So they are Velcro, they hold a bunch of cards and just really great for storage and keeping stuff protected. So I was a big fan of these deck boxes. Here's a bit bigger one. That's also very lightweight, but but first thing on the shopping haul that we bought were deck boxes. So let's update the little, I'll, I'll keep a little running total, but let's update the total now with the deck boxes. All right, speaking of card protection, up next we have sleeves. So finding proper size Yu-Gi-Oh sleeves around where I live in Australia in Sydney is kind of hard. So finding sleeves was kind of a little priority of mine whenever in Japan. And these were by far the kind of best sleeves that I could find. So these are the KMC Mini and the KMC Mini Perfect. So it's two different sizes. And the way these kind of are used are, the Mini Perfect is a perfect fit sleeve for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Let me actually grab a card out and I can show you how these are supposed to work. Okay, so we've got our trusty Maneater bug here. So we'll start with the Mini Perfect sleeve. So this is a perfect fit sleeve for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So what that means is, is it is going to hug the card extremely tightly. It's a perfect fit. Um, you can see that is a literal perfect fit. And so these are a great combination with the actual mini sleeve if you're trying to double sleeve cards because they've really made these things to work together. So when you take the mini sleeve itself, you can put the perfect sleeve as a double sleeve and it fits perfectly. It's supposed to work together. So now you have a double sleeved card and it's just perfect fit. Like, that's <laughs> what more can I say? It's a perfect fit. So I'm a big fan of these. So I'm not the biggest fan of using the mini perfect sleeve on cards that are a bit high value or that you're trying to really maintain the condition pristine because I'm not a fan of perfect fit sleeves, how they kind of grab tightly and rub up on the edges of cards. So in cases like that, I much prefer to just use the mini sleeve. And if you just use the mini sleeve, it is a great fit and it leaves plenty of breathing room around the edges of the card. But yeah, these are a great option for double sleeving. So loving the KMC sleeves. So that was the mini perfect and the minis. So the mini perfect is 60 by 87 mil and the mini is 62 by 87 mil. So these go great together. Um, the price is they were 250 yen each, which was about $2.50 each. So can't really go wrong. I always pick up a couple of packs of these when I'm in Japan because they're always useful and they're great to have around. So speaking of sleeves, let's keep going with the sleeves. Um, around May, June last year was in the thick of the 25th anniversary celebrations of Yu-Gi-Oh! So of course I picked up these. 
So these are the 25th quarter century uh, deck sleeves, uh, official Konami deck sleeves. So the Duelist card protector. So we have red and we have black. So the red ones were uh, $7, around $8 for 100. And the black ones actually, um, well, I actually forgot to mention, so a lot of this stuff I bought from just random card stores when walking around, me and my wife just exploring. And some were also bought from random like secondhand stores. So there's a store chain called Book Off, which does a lot of um, secondhand thrift. It's like a thrift store. So, and they do have some uh, trading card supplies there. So I found this guy from Book Off. So I think this packet was open, but it is still, um, all uh, 100 sleeves, but it was like half price. So you can see these are $3. So I got the black version and the red version. So $7, $3 for the 25th quarter century Duelist card protectors. All right, let's keep it going. Let's try to rapid fire because uh, we've got a lot of stuff to cover and um, this video is getting pretty long already. So next up, I had to get these. These are, these are just so cool to me. The official Konami sleeves for Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG and Rush Duel, but these, are these sleeves that look like the actual card backs. So I got these from Yellow Submarine, as you can see here, which is sort of a trading card slash hobby store. These were also 770 yen, so these are about $8 each. Next up, we have these. So this is a double pack. So speaking of book off and thrift stores, I found these in a thrift store. So these are the sleeves from the Prismatic God Box. So there are 70 of the black kind of tablet sleeves. And then on the back, there are 70 of the silver border sleeves. So these were the ones that came in the prismatic god box. These are the very cool hollow tablet sleeves. Pretty cool set and these were a total of 864 yen, so about nine dollars for these two packs of sleeves. Not bad, not bad. All right now so moving on, next up we have side loaders. So these are basically top loaders but they load in from the side. So if you get any card stores in Japan you'll quickly realize that all of the cards on display, well, a lot of them on display, they're all stored in side loaders, not top loaders. Now, coming from the West in Australia, uh, I've never really seen side loaders before. I'm only used to, I've only known top loaders. Well, first, I wasn't really a fan of the side loaders. But, you know, the more I thought about it and like when I actually tried using some, side loaders just make a lot more sense than top loaders to me. Like I could honestly make a whole video on top loaders versus side loaders. I might actually make that video. I might make a video on the Japanese way of storing and protecting cards. But yeah, that was side loaders. I did buy quite a few. So we'll update the total on the screen and then let's move to the next thing. Okay, so up next, speaking of card protection, we have these. So these are the TCG full protect sleeves. So I'm a huge fan of these. Basically what these are, they are snap cases, uh, snap like acrylic cases for your cards. So this is the small size, so this fits Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, there's also the regular size that is a perfect fit for Pokemon cards. Let me show you, we'll take this one out. Basically, this is what you get. It is kind of a acrylic snap case, but let's get our trusty man a bug back in the picture and I'll show you how this works. So it snaps together, these two halves. So it opens just like that. Take your card, put it in the back piece like that fits in there nicely and then the front bit snaps back on like that and then you have a fully protected in a kind of hard acrylic which is UV protected UV rated as well at 85% if they're not lying um, but there you have it it's fully protected the back in a nice hard shell and look how thin it like I love how thin it is as well so this is kind of the Japanese alternative to like magnetic one touch cases which I'm not really a fan of but these are such a uh, so much nicer and sleek way of protecting and displaying your own cards. It's kind of like you're in slab. So these are the TCG full protect sleeves. So I bought a bunch and look at the price. So they come in packs of three or 300 yen, so $3. So they're a dollar each. So that's in my brain, that was a no brainer. So I bought a bunch of these. I bought a bunch of the small size. I bought a bunch of the regular size for Pokemon cards. And then I also bought, they also have these in crazy sizes. So let me show you. They also have them in booster pack sizes. So I bought a bunch for booster packs. So these are the large size. So these are a bit thicker, but you can fit a full booster pack. Let me open it and show you. 
but they are meant to basically protect your booster packs. So this is pretty awesome in my opinion. You put your booster pack in there, um, seal it back up, but they're pretty much slabs for booster packs. So if you don't exactly want to grade your packs or you just want to protect them, these are a fantastic option in my opinion. So that's the booster pack case. So these are the large size for the kind of thicker booster packs. And again, they're 85% UV protected. There's the small size, which is a bit thinner. So they fit in the thinner, I think Yu-Gi-Oh booster packs a lot nicer. So I bought a bunch of these as well. I just went crazy. Um, and then they also had these, this is the W. So this, I think that means wide, but it can basically fit two by two cards wide, like, like that. So great for display like cards that go in sets of two. I wish there was a three wide one, maybe there is, but I didn't really see that. So I also picked this guy up, but I bought a bunch of these. I love these. TCG, full protect sleeves, um, highly recommended. A super sleek way to store and display your cards, kind of like your own personal slabs, if you don't want to go uh, as far as grading some of your collection. All right, so next up we have more accessories. We have these guys here. So if you know what these are, these are the card display cases, the screw down cases that came with the Prismatic God Box. I'm a big fan of these. I, I think they're great for displaying cards. Let's see if I can open one to show you how it kind of works and goes all together. So that's the kind of center of it. And then you get this screw down case that has the Yu-Gi-Oh branding. I don't know if it's gonna focus, but when everything goes together, I'll try, I'll just put a photo up of what it looks like, but these are awesome. So these are a great find. Like I had so much fun buying you get accessories and merch more than like cards, honestly, sometimes, but I was trying to find more of these. I found three of these. Um, they were 700 yen each, seven bucks each, which, which was a bargain, honestly, in my opinion. So if they had more, I would have bought more. I was hunting for these everywhere, but I got three of them, $7 each, and they are just really cool in my opinion. So they're gonna make for great display pieces sometime soon. But speaking of the display cases, I also did find, um, some more of these, not the God Box uh, cases, but I found these. So I found a complete sealed box of the card display case set. If I understand correctly, this is a set that is sold in the OCG by Konami themselves. You get three, but these are blue. So they're blue instead of gold, and they kind of have this Kyber Corp sort of digital design on it, but very cool as well. But it's the same deal there, the screw down case. Um, but they're gonna make for a very cool display piece as well and they do have the Yu-Gi-Oh branding along the bottom. So yeah, you get three in a box, you get all the accessories and I thought this was a really cool find because um, yeah, I couldn't find any more of these on the trip as well actually. So I was definitely happy to pick these up. These were 1,890 yen, so about eight, 20 bucks. 20 bucks for three uh, cases in the box as well. I thought it was a bargain, so definitely had to pick up the card display case set. All right, so next up we have these things here. If you know what these are, these are called the secret utility boxes. I didn't really wanna buy these boxes. We found them in a random card store, but my wife was super interested. These things are, if you can see the price, they're only 300 yen each. So it's $3. And at the time we bought them, they were all sealed. They had plastic wrapping on them. And she was just shaking them and she was wondering, what do you get for $3? Um, at the time, I didn't know what these were. I didn't know they were the secret utility box or, or whatnot, but basically what these are were um, accessory boxes, but they had promo cards inside. So I understand like what people do is they would just buy these, take the promo cards out, and then the rest of the contents they would just throw out. So that was basically what this card store was doing. So we'll open this one up, we'll see what you get, you basically get some sleeves. This box and these sleeves here were the Chaos Ruler sleeves. You get die and you get a, a deck box. One of those like soft deck boxes, you get that as well. So that's, so when we opened this one, I thought, okay, you pay three bucks, you get this, like whatever, it's okay. But when we opened the other two, the, the other two were significantly heavier than that first one. So when basically, when we opened this, what you got was just mass bulk. You paid $3 for bulk, and this was bulk of like some of the latest sets that had come out. But <laughs> I kind of regretted buying these. We, they weren't sorted, by the way. When we bought them, it was just all over the place. We were actually bothered enough to sort them all by, by card. So these are all spell cards, and we put them in sleeves. But we basically paid $9 for a bunch of crazy bulks. <laughs> so, 
If you're looking for Japanese bulk, it is definitely cheap. Um, I think what did, what was in this one? Let me check. Uh, okay, we had we actually got some monster cards in here. So we've got some random. This is from Dune DP28 DP28 Dune Dune. So this is some of the later sets that came out at the time. Just mass bulk. But yeah, that was an interesting one. All right, next up we have mats. I bought a couple of mats while I was over there. Um, the first one was this one. This is the Dark Magician Girl, well, Black Magician Girl, they call it in Japan, mats. So it's this one right here. That's what it kind of looks like in black and white. I'll open it out, but they were selling this everywhere. Honestly, every single card store we went to had a bunch of these for sale. So I don't know if they overproduced them and they was trying to offload them or something, but they were basically selling for $30 at all those card stores. I didn't pick it up, but then I saw this one on sale for pretty much half price. It's uh, 1,200 yen, so like $12, $13. So for that price, I had to pick it up. So let's actually open this up and see what it looks like. All right, Black Magician Girl mat. I think, I'm pretty sure they released uh, a similar looking mat uh, in English in the TCG, but this is the Japanese version and in Japan a dark magician girl is called the black magician girl. So Let's have a look at this thing. Let me zoom the camera out. So opening it out Black magician girl mat. I'm gonna have to zoom out even more. Um, pretty cool mat for $30 I don't I wasn't really sure but for $12 $13. This was kind of a no-brainer. So it's a nice mat Quality mat official Konami mat of the dark magician girl the uncensored artwork I might add but yeah black magician girl. It's a great mat Next mat I got was this one. This is the mat from the 20th anniversary set. So I found this, uh, at, I'm pretty sure it was at one of the thrift stores, but, but this was a great price. I found this for about 700 yen, so seven bucks for the 20th anniversary set mat. So basically this came as part of the bigger 20th anniversary set where you got the premium pack one reprint. So everyone of course um, takes the cards out and they just don't really care about the other accessories, but I was more than happy to pick this up for seven bucks. Um, let me open this up and show you what it looks like because in my opinion, this is one of the best looking mats that they've made for Yu-Gi-Oh! So Yu-Gi-Oh! official card game, 20th anniversary. You have the big logo in gold, Yu-Gi and Dark Magician in gold. And then in the back you have uh, a kind of wall of all the classic cards throughout the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! So like a really great map. Let me zoom in to show you um, if you can see some of the cards are here. We've got, of course, we've got the Blue Eyes Series 1. We've got Black Luster Soldier, Elemental Hero, we've got Jinzo, Dark Magician Girl. Just all the classics. So like an awesome map. And for $7, this was a no-brainer. So had to pick this mat up as well. Yeah, this was a awesome find and awesome buy in my opinion. All right, and the last mat I bought, I kind of regret buying this one, but I just bought it because it was so cheap. And like, I was literally hunting for any kind of Yu-Gi-Oh merch I could find. And when I found this, it was cheap, so I bought it. So this mat was about 465 yen, so about five bucks, $4, $5. And it is a Konami Firewall Dragon mat. So. I'm not the biggest fan of Firewall Dragon, but it's cool. And I remember finding this early on in the trip and I thought it was pretty cool design. So for four or five dollars, um, yeah, it's not bad. Maybe this one I regret a bit. I could have done better, but that's kind of it for the mats. So next up is a little bit of an interesting one. So like I mentioned before, I was having so much fun hunting down anything Yu-Gi-Oh related in Japan, like just merch, accessories. So the next thing requires me to explain what Ichiban Kuji is. So I'm not even 100% sure myself. So if anyone watching knows better than me, please leave a comment down below and explain to me better. But from my understanding, Ichiban Kuji is basically character raffles or anime lottery sort of things in Japan. So basically stores will participate and they will hold, they will sell raffle tickets. Basically, you buy raffle tickets out of participating stores. Basically, you buy a raffle ticket, um, you, you scratch it or you peel off the code or something, and depending on what prize you get, you'll get the corresponding prize. So they produce a bunch of limited merch for these prizes. Everything ranging from like figurines to keychains, like cups, mugs, just crazy stuff like that. So there has been some Yu-Gi-Oh! Ichiban Kujis in the past. So some of the stuff I did find were some of the prizes. So this one right here is pretty random, but it is a paper file. So like a, a folder file for your paper, but Yu-Gi-Oh! themed. So here you can see this is uh, the Ichiban Kuji for Bandai Namco. Um, it is the volume two for Yu-Gi-Oh! So this is probably the second one they did for Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think this was the G level prize. So like one of the lower prizes. 
But that's the Ichiban Kuji logo right there. It's one of the lower lowest level prizes I think you can win, but it was only 110 yen, so it was literally a dollar. So I picked it up anyway, just for the for the sake of it. But the next thing, the next thing is maybe my favorite thing that I found in Japan that was Yu-Gi-Oh related. More than, even better than some cards, I wanna say. These. So these were also Ichiban Kuji prizes. Um, I'm not sure what level prize they were, but these are basically art boards or art prints. I think in Japanese they call them shikishis or square art boards, square art prints. But basically there is a dark magician one, a blue eyes one, a black luster soldier one, and a wing dragon of Ra. So there are actually way more than this, but these are the only ones I could find. Um, and I didn't actually find these, my wife found these. She showed them to me and I just thought they were the coolest things ever. So basically they are full size hollow foil prints of the original card arts and the quality of the printing is just crazy. Let me zoom in. The quality of these prints is absolutely unreal. They're crazy. The fact that they are hollow are so cool and the price, so these are 900 yen, $9. $9 for this art print. I thought it was just the coolest thing ever. So the Dark Magician, I was able to find the Blue Eyes one as well, which has got to be so cool. I know there's also a Dark Magician Girl one, but it's not the MFC art. It's like the art where she's copying this pose, which is not my favorite, but I wasn't able to find that. But we found the Blue Eyes one, which is so cool as well. Full hollow foil prints and the quality just crazy. Like there's no pixelating or anything. Like they went, they really went all out with these. So the Blue Eyes one was a bit more expensive. It was $12. The Black Luster Soldier was uh, $9, $10 as well. This one is also very cool. And then the Winged Dragon of Ra was only $5. Yeah, these are basically some of the favorite things that I found on the trip, even more than some of the cards, I reckon. These art balls are just awesome, in my opinion. They're gonna make great display pieces. And um, such a cool thing that they made for the raffle. But that is the Ichiban Kuji art boards. All right, so the last bit of merch or accessories that I found for Yu-Gi-Oh is these. So this is almost the complete collection of Game Boy games for Yu-Gi-Oh. So this is the Game Boy Color game, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters. So I managed to find almost the entire set of Yu-Gi-Oh games. So this is number two. This is Dark Duel Stories, the Japanese version. I actually bought two of them by accident. But look at the price as well. These were all 100 yen each, $1 each. So this is the Game Boy Color second game. This is the third game right here. This one's called Try Holy God, Yu-Gi-Oh Game Boy Color. The fourth game I have right here, this is Battle of the Great Duelist. Then next we going, we're moving on to Game Boy Advance. So this is the fifth game. This is called Expert One. Um, the sixth game is called Expert Two. And then the seventh game here is called the Dual City Legend, which I think in English was the the Sacred Cards. And I think the fourth one was Soul of the Duelist. I found I think there's an eighth one that I'm missing. I couldn't find the eighth game, but this is one through seven Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Boy to Game Boy Advance games. And yeah, as you can see, the price, they were all one dollar each. So for a dollar each for this piece of history, I thought it was so cool. So it was a no-brainer. I had to pick up one of each, almost the entire set. And speaking of Game Boy, I also found these. So these are the boxes, the actual original boxes for the number four. So this was the Battle of Great Duelists, or I think the Eternal Duelist Soul was the fourth one in English. And then the fifth one, Expert One. So this is the original boxes. When I came across these, I had to buy them. And they were so cheap, look at the price. 30 yen, literally three cents. And then 50 yen, literally five cents. So three cents and five cents for these original boxes. Like such cool display pieces to go along with the actual Game Boy games themselves. That would, this is also um, one of my favorite pickups from the whole trip. That pretty much covers everything Yu-Gi-Oh related that is non-cards that I bought mid last year from Japan. Um, I'll put the running total here. I'm not sure how much I spent on that Yu-Gi-Oh accessories and merch. But this video is getting pretty long already. And what I might do now is I might make a cut. So I'll do a part one, this will be part one. In the part two, we will definitely go through this binder. So this is a binder of all of the cards that I bought 
um, from that trip. So some high value stuff, some a little bit low value stuff. And at the beginning of the video, you might have seen already there are some cards in these deck boxes that I bought, but I might leave that for a part two. But yeah, let me know what you think was the best thing that I bought. Let me know if you think I spent too much money on some things or not. But yeah, as you can see, it is very easy to spend money on Yu-Gi-Oh stuff in Japan. Yeah, you gotta have a budget because I was basically just hunting for anything Yu-Gi-Oh related. But yeah, this has been part one of my Yu-Gi-Oh shopping haul. Make sure to come back for part two where we go through all of the cards and I'll see you then.